Well, hello, that's me again. Today is uh, the uh, 9th of August, and I hope you're all having a good day. But let's start not putting things away into the long box, and I will start with the thing which I'm always uh, calling the uh, Stop the Planet, Let Me Get Off. And I already wrote about it in my blog, and the whole thing was making rounds uh, around internet. And yeah, one has to really start scratching one's head when they see this. And uh, I don't know how much uh, or if it's really genuine, uh, but looks like it is genuine peace. And yes, uh, this only confirms what I've been on the record for many years, that basically if we want to improve somewhat the cognitive and uh, mental faculties of the humanity, all journalist schools, especially the schools from the uh, American Ivy League, and especially so in UK where they pre prepare basically prostitutes, uh, has to be dismantled. And those uh, professors and PhDs in journalism, those are shysters. They don't have education, they just basically promote agenda. And here we are. Ah, here's one of the example of how China may be using sea to hide, it, hide its submarines. I always thought that submarines uh, usually operate on the ground and sometimes they fly above the clouds and that's where they hide. But you, if you look at entering the mountains probably, you will find some submarines hiding there. But here it is, China m making this incredible advancement and try, trying to use a uh, see as the hiding place for its submarines. So what what do you know? Next thing you know, we will invent in by the 23rd uh, century, I know, th those things which, you know, have four wheels and they are able to drive on the ground. I don't know how they call it. I believe they call it automobiles. So there you go. That's the level of the journalism, my friends, in the West. And it's uh, basically, as I already stated, we have people with the mentality of the fifth graders, the high, probably high schoolers, if you want to see one of such uh, uh, imbecile and basically genocidal maniac, you can take a look at Christian Amanpour, for example, of former CNN, PBS, what have you, and you will understand that those people, they know nothing. Uh, Anderson Cooper knows nothing. They have no education, they have no background, and that is why they think that China finally arrived to this, uh, you know, uh, ability to hide things under the sea and call them submarines. So there you go. And this is uh, actually one of the things which will set up the tone for today. And uh, apart from the complete ignorance of the uh, so-called uh, mainstream journalism core, which again, as already stated, their level of the skills primarily is fit to discuss lingerie, how, who and sleeps with Hollywood and things of this nature. This is the extent of their professional uh, uh, cap capabilities. But uh, here we have this other thing. And I don't know, what is this? Is this uh, 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 basically exposition or demonstration of their uh, how to put it politely, the butt hurt, but uh, here it is. Here is Mr. Nelson, and um, the head of NASA does not consider Russia a participant in the current space race. And here's the guy, I don't think many will now say that Russia is able to land cosmonauts on the moon within the time frames we are talking about, and perhaps China. So I think that the space race is between us and China, Nelson said at a press uh, briefing dedicated to NASA's preparations for a manned flight to the moon's orbit as part of the Artemis II mission. And this kind of demonstrates to you this constant uh, continuous butthurt, and evidently Mr. Nelson, if you look attentively who Mr. Nelson is, the chief of NASA, you will be surprised. It's a classic Obama-Biden uh, political appointee, and the guy actually by education is a lawyer and former congressman. He has one interesting note in his resume. He flew actually into space as the payload specialist on one of the shuttles in 1980s when that was uh, kind of, you know, fashionable to get the members of the Congress and, you know, launch them into orbit. And the guy obviously went through some some training, basic training, and payload uh, specialist is the euphemism for uh, actually space tourists. The guy obviously wouldn't be allowed uh, uh, around any kind of the controls or management of any uh, flight tasks on shuttles. But here it is. And now this guy, because he flew in space and he has a degree in, uh, uh, in law, uh, he runs NASA. 
and obviously the question is that why you have to constantly go out and uh, pretend that you know something about the subject when basically when you look actually currently today that uh, Russia is preparing for the moon launch of her uh, Luna 25, which should be on Friday. As you can see yourself, Russia is getting to launch its first mission to the moon in nearly 50 years in an attempt to stay relevant amidst a renewed space race. First, space race never stopped to start with. And the fact is that even there are... Uh, stupid uh, headline of this thing tells you that uh, people are not really themselves. Here it is, Russia elbows into the new moon race with upcoming Luna 25 launch. First, I will tell you one thing. Uh, the automatic station Luna 25, actually, who knows, it might go successful, it might fail, but for people who are actually dealing with any kind of the very advanced and serious technology, they have to understand that it is always the, uh, basically, risk management which is involved into this kind of the missions. So we'll see if Russia succeeds on landing this Luna 25. Uh, Soviet Union did it before many times. If you look attentively at the Soviet um, uh, track record of the moon exploration. And of course, Mr. Nelson, NASA's uh, big honcho on um, uh, statements about Russia not being the part of the uh, space race. Ob it's, yeah, it's a butt hurt. It's sour grapes. The guy cannot, you know, shake off Russians from there. So, as he thinks, uh, U.S. back. Of course, he forgets that actually half of the International Space Station was built by Russians and that uh, for years, uh, these were Russian Soyuz uh, spaceships, which were delivering, including American astronauts, to and from. But, again, as I already stated, sour grapes, constant griping, constant, uh, I mean, not an ability to resign uh, themselves to the fact that, no, United States is not anymore this super dominating power, superpower, which primarily have been blown out of proportions by the U.S. media. So it's, uh, how to put it this way, it's just difficult. And when you look at the, also this Jorna uh, uh, lady, whoever wrote uh, this garbage, uh, her name is Masan Drabi, and guess what? Uh, just look at those uh, degrees. Look at what this gal who has no clue, no background, she begins to write about space race. Here is she, Passant Rabi, the American University in Cairo, Bachelor of Arts, Journalism and Mass Communication. That means you don't have any education. They don't teach you anything uh, of value in those things. No, a normal person with IQ above room temperature, it will take a year, uh, a, a most year to basically get a real uh, background in journalism and be done with it. In fact, is most people can do this in less than half a year. So we have also the Master of Arts for uh, MA, Science, Health, and Environmental Reporting. I don't even know what kind of degrees is that. I don't know what what do they teach there. It's, it's, it's garbage. It's the waste of time, money. It's basically academic fraud, which is American education is known, including primarily Western education. And of course, you can see yourself, she had advanced right, uh, rights media training and journalist for human rights. In other words, she has zero, in fact, negative background in writing about space, especially writing about Russian space program, but here we are. And then, of course, you have this political appointee, Mr. Nelson, who is NASA big honcha. NASA used to have, actually, people with the serious uh, technical background, I mean, the STEM background. They were PhDs in aeronautical engineering and things of this nature. And suddenly you have this guy. Okay, well, sure, it's nothing surprising here. And... Um, that brings us to the other point, which is, uh, you know what, it's it's becoming, again, ridiculous, but I need to uh, comment on that, because people uh, really expect me to, so here I am, discussing things which you uh, everybody uh, waits for my uh, comments. Here it is, USA Today. And, and again, it's yesterday, and again, you have those people, who, whoever those people are, 
and they begin to explain why the Ukrainian counteroffensive is making little progress against Russian defense. And here we have this guy writing into USA Today all this about that, yeah, Ukrainian forces have had limited success uprooting entrenched uh, Russian soldiers in eastern Ukraine, and now the Western-backed counteroffensive that began with great hope faces crunch time with fall approaching. The rain and mud of autumn will make the slog even harder. And what I want to say when I uh, read all those Western-backed, Western trained, Western what have you, and uh, armed, and you name it, is very simple to put it mildly and read my lips. You can quote me on that. I repeat it all the time. And yeah, actually, learning uh, the part, huge part of the learning is the repetition. If somebody thinks that you can do it just, you know, uh, fun and games, no. The learning is actually a difficult process. It's a labor. And here's a repetition of what I am constantly on the record. There are no people in Pentagon, except as I already stated, maybe some people in the middle levels. Upper level, let alone the, those fresh, uh, uh, fresh whatever, the insights or lieutenants, what have you, uh, from the West Point. They have no clue what, how to fight the modern war. They don't understand what operational art is. They don't understand how Russians plan operations. They don't understand genesis of Russian operational planning. They just have no clue. And that is why when you look at this and when you begin to take into consideration the issue of the, for example, as I am constantly on record, those field manuals, those doc the doctrinal approach of the United States Army at how you can fight so-called combined arms. First, they don't have any experience with real combined arms. And secondly, I mean, especially considering the a dramatic, really precipitous decline in the cognitive abilities of the whole uh, U.S. Uh, Oh, generally Western elites. And then, of course, you have those Chihuahuas from London who, uh, whose army is smaller than the, uh, basically the size of the uh, Wembley Stadium, who, uh, ad uh, you know, advise those guys and those people, they have no clue. And I'm talking about professional military. They don't understand how operations are planned. They don't understand how they implement it. And the question is not only about discussing the strategy. And the strategy being this general plan of how approach things, how to achieve your goals. No, operation is this uh, foundation in which you basically begin to implement your strategies. And they have no clue. Well, you would expect that when you have been educated and influenced and your whole mentality have been shaped by former Wehrmacht. And then, of course, there are such offsprings of the BS peddling, such as Sir Anthony Beaver and other types of the so-called military historians, or Carla de Este, who I don't know how he can write, you know, book about Patton being the genius of war. But these are the guys. They thought they know how to do it. They don't. And the question is, indeed, the scale and the scope of what is happening right now, and it's all related. It doesn't mean that you can directly apply uh, things, so to speak, but it is related to the scale and scope of the Red Army's operation on the World War II. And Western allies haven't been even close in that during World War II. Simple as that. This is what Russians do. This is how they approach war. And, of course, when you look attentively at those uh, royal uh, United Service Institute conclusion that, oh, we're back to the industrial warfare. Who told you that we are back? We have been always there. And uh, yesterday it was the date, a uh, very remarkable date, 15 years since uh, Russia first uh, put uh, her foot down and basically destroyed in five days the Georgian army, which was also, as you might expect, trained and armed uh, largely by the West. So it took five days, really actually four, but on the fifth day it was basically complete disintegration. Russians had their uh, road to uh, Tbilisi uh, open, but nobody wants Tbilisi, nobody wants Georgia on the balance of Russia. So Russians just let it be and uh, so liberated Abkhazia and Assyria and there you go. So and this was the first time when Russia de uh, declared and made the statement sh that she is coming back. And then of course now we have this issue of the uh, complete, not only butthurt, I don't know, it's uh, such a doom and gloom that uh, we have people like this. 
they go out all those fanboys and believe me there are there is a lot of fanboy hurt but hurt and sour grapes going around it's it's delightful to watch and here you have the guy uh, another guy defense tv that this is another channel of all those guys probably with the degree in journalism uh, or something like david x comic artist or something like this and they talk about what happens if russia reverse engineering the leopard tank and they uh basically I refer to the Vladimir Putin statement, which was kind of tongue-in-cheek, actually, if you listen to it in Russian, then, yeah, sure, we will take a look, you know, what is inside, and why not? You know, so this is what you do. You get the uh, enemy's equipment, and you look inside. This is what the uh, same happened, with, by the way, with uh, Wehrmacht, when they first obtained T-34, and they were stunned by the design of the tank. There's nothing to be stunned with the design of Leopard 2s, but the point is, uh, the great thing about it is that the, in the comments to this thing that uh, many people explain to them that uh, yeah it's gonna be looked at and that's it I mean and again the, the most important element of any modern platform today is it's uh, in case of tanks it's ballistic computers and it's uh, uh, basically ability to operate within net centric uh, net centric paradigm and uh, yeah optics things of this nature but yeah sure and uh, again so this it's not big deal but you know those guys those uh, basically um uh, the technology masturbators technophiles they cannot live with this just talking about that oh my god they have the leopard tanks of course they do and there is again as i already stated there's so much grief uh, going around now when they are uh, basically all of the western equipment have been completely discredited the myth of the technological uh, advantage of the west and uh, have been completely dispelled and there you go but then of course we have this situation now because uh, <clears throat> it is being run by people as i already stated uh, such as jake sullivan anthony blink and things you know so the guys who basically never left any comforts of their existence in their life they now talk about that yeah washington approves first abrams tank delivery to kiev the u.s the u.s made heavy armor is due to arrive in ukraine by early autumn the pentagon has said sure sure it was expected and as i already stated that this is as much as the united states can go now the only thing which is left for united states to to be discredited and to be paraded as the basically no well technological fraud not fitted for the fight of the modern combined arms warfare are uh, 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 elements of the air force which are of course combat airplanes of course let them supply f-16 see what happened and uh, they obviously as I already stated many times, and I repeat pretty much uh, universal wisdom that uh, neocons and those guys who run uh, Biden administration, they don't have uh, rear gear because they are totally uncultured, uneducated people, and they believe that Russia is about to disintegrate and Russians run out of tanks and everything. So what can I say? Uh, it's their issue, obviously, it's their problem, but here we are. We have this Abrams tanks, and here it is. The U.S. has pledged a total of 31 tanks or the equivalent of Ukrainian battalion. In late July, Politico reported that only between six and eight heavy equipment pieces might make it to Ukraine by September. Well, and here comes this crucial issue. Originally, the Pentagon intended to use uh, the more modern M1A2 uh, variants, but changed its plans in March, opting for the older M1A1. Newsweek and Politico previously reported that the U.S. made tanks are to be stripped of any sensitive technology first before they can be handed to Kyiv. Again, everything uh, marked here and discussed here and in this uh, quote, has an extremely simple explanation 31 abrams okay it's about the same uh time frame before uh leopard 2s which are actually better tanks than uh, abrams have been uh, started to be burned and uh, this was really within the first uh, i mean couple three weeks and then bang we started to get the leopards and now they're being withdrawn because this is a absolute discreditation and absolute shame for rhine metal and uh, german uh, tank builders uh, believe me they never coming back and uh so we have now abrams sure especially this will arrive with the basic ballistic computer this will arrive with basic optics and then what do we have next uh 
yeah, they will burn. And guess what? As Russians promised, they probably will be put out on the display in front of the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. So, I mean, just to remind you that, uh, yeah, we have a complete list now at this stage that basically we can start writing about this openly and many people already do and many people say that NATO is not capable to fight a real war with Russia. It just can't. I mean, obviously, it could still be could be horrendous, uh, uh, you know, a slaughter, and Russians will obviously lose some people. But the point is that, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, they. Uh, it's like explaining to some guy from U.S. Air Force uh, Academy who have been taught how to blow uh, out without imp with impunity all kinds of their uh, ancient Soviet air defense complexes. What it means to fly around and into the uh, air defense zone, especially controlled by Russian early warning and Russian excellent air force, very capable and very modern, uh, and see what happens after that. But again, those guys never encountered a real S-300, they never encountered S-400, they also don't understand what it is encountered to S-500, and we're talking about, we are not even talking about the modern iterations of the book M3. And again, as I already stated, uh, we don't even know how many SU-57 57s now flying, we know some numbers and people report on those numbers of Russian military production, uh, of course, which uh, all kinds of the sewer, uh, media sewer and human sewer too, in from London like Telegraph tried to discredit, oh, Russia is running out of tanks, yes, look up the uh, yesterday's uh, demonstration of the uh, newest T-80s with the Sasna uh, optical electronic complex, I mean, huge train hauling, I don't know, many dozens of those tanks to the front lines. And this is just one occasion. So you cannot fix those people. They are either stupid or totally perverse or both. And that is why I have periodically people ask, tell me, oh, don't tell, just say something about this guy or that guy. No. You, I can't take the white brush and paint it over with the white brush because this is what it is. It is a complete discreditation, in fact, disintegration in every single uh, aspect of the professional activity of the Western mainstream media. Believe me, Russia has the same problem. It's not as acute, but believe me, those people who go into media, they go there because it's easy. It is easy. It requires no effort, no intellectual. Uh, emotional or any kind of efforts to get their degrees in journalism and then having clue about nothing literally try to uh, c comment on the things which they have no idea about and that, that's what we have journalism as a profession is a fake profession it doesn't exist we used to have a reporters we used to have honest professional people who would go into the whatever the issue they had whatever the problem and they would report on it without trying to pretend that they uh, provide any kind of the expert opinion they don't fact is most experts which work in the modern western media are not experts at all they have all those degrees and all those you know supposedly experiences in the whiteboard theorists, yet they have no clue. And I am on record now. If special military operation didn't happen, it should have been invented to demonstrate, to expose the degree of the fallacy and utter in professionalism and uh, lack of any ethics and morals among so many people, among so many <clears throat> sectors of the society, especially in the West, which we have now political elites, military elites, uh, industry, and let alone journalism exposed as complete frauds. And that brings us to this uh, basically uh, issue of the uh, uh, losses of the armed forces of Ukraine. They continue to be slaughtered. And I want to stress it again, which I always stress now and again this is repetition this is how you be, uh, how you get your education that you learn things through repetition first what you see here are numbers which are confirmed on the front lines for example you got you got 7905 killed you have that uh, tally and butcher's bill for august of 6795 you have 22 tanks 135 motor vehicles 139 pieces of artillery annihilated but keep in mind and i repeat it again 
no no smaller in fact sometimes higher losses occur in the immediate rear and operational rear of the Ukrainian armed forces. This is where a Russian defense ministry cannot go in and physically calculate bodies, but the losses they sustain into this immediate rear or that tactical rear and the operational rear are huge. They either equal or even higher than what we have in the front lines. That is why when people uh, like Colonel McGregor and others say, oh yeah, they killed a nail later, 400,000 plus, they are correct. And this is the thing which many people still do not understand. This is not exactly anymore the war of the 20th century. You cannot just simply draw those war correlates and proportions and ratios directly. You cannot. You have to be very cautious when applying this because obviously we live into the 21st century warfare paradigm. And this paradigm is a massive stand of weapons capability of Russia. Again, United States is nowhere near in terms of stand of weapons, their production and use. And so all those things are about like, oh yeah, we use 290 Tomahawks, you know, shooting at basically defenseless uh, Baghdad in Iraq. Uh, I don't know how many thousands of the uh, cruise missiles Russia now used by now. A lot. And she still produces them <laughs> and actually produces them and the production rate is increasing. And that's what you have to keep in mind. And that's why I am on the record and I repeat it again. Um, we need to expect and appalling numbers when it's all, all over and done and those numbers will be the indictment of people in Washington and in London who thought they, they know better. They don't. American political system, American educational system doesn't produce statesmen. It produces primarily political shysters capable of making deals within the legislative process uh, and political process on the, uh, uh, in Washington DC and that's it. Most of those people are ignoramuses. And that is why, for example, when you listen to Anthony Blinken or Jake Sullivan, my God, these people won't be allowed to mow the lawn in some you know, respectable family elsewhere. But here we are, we have those people. And what, what do I expect? So we might get even uh, into the tougher times in this respect. So now, before I go, I want to improve your mood so to speak and this is the best thing i saw in a long time if you ever saw the church of the confused chicken here it is i mean i love it this is the magnificent church it's beautiful actually but yeah who would ever thought that looking at you like this yeah it is a confused chicken this was fun and i liked it so i just wanted to share it with you okay guys i need to go now and as always those who like what i do please uh subscribe to my channel and support me on the patreon on buy me and coffee and too i need to take a break of about few days because i need to do and undergo nothing absolutely serious everything just absolutely normal so it's a little bit of the uh, uh hospital visit which is again nothing serious whatsoever so and i should be back to form uh, fairly soon so okay so what can i say have a nice uh, rest of the week guys and i'll talk to you later bye bye